Manx Radio's update with Beth Espy. Fast to my good evening. It's Friday the 9th of August. This is Update on Manx Radio. It's your rundown of what's been happening around the island newswise today. Coming up tonight, why a company was told it couldn't attend the Manx show and details of the subsequent apology from DEFA. Also on the programme, the woman behind a fundraiser for the family of a 21-year-old from Peel who died this week says the island's response has been heartwarming and will also be joined live by the head of air traffic traffic control to talk about drones. All that and we'll keep an eye on the latest road situation and as ever if you spot something when you're out and about 166177 or you can email studio at manxradio.com. Let's join Chanel first of all for the latest news headlines. The woman behind an appeal to raise funds for the family of a 21-year-old Peel man who died in a road traffic collision on Wednesday says there's been a heart a heartwarming response from the people of the island. Melissa Menton told Manx Radio the money raised currently standing at more than £6,000 will be used to cover funeral expenses and provide assistance to the family. The Department of Environment, Food and Agriculture has apologised after a local company was told it could no longer attend the royal show. It's due to a discrepancy in its contracts which prevented Gelatory being there due to an exclusivity deal which th- that the show has with another vendor. DEFA's top civil servant has described the situation as unfortunate and regrettable. And the Mountain Road will close again this evening from 6.30pm to 10pm for maintenance work. The closure is from Barul Park Ramsey to the Craigna Bar. There's also provisional closure dates available starting from Monday. In international news, a man who encouraged people to attack a hotel housing asylum seekers is one of the first people to be jailed for stirring racial hatred online. 28-year-old Jordan Pahl has been sentenced to 20 months as a, dozens, as a dozens of others face charges over their involvement in the unrest across the UK. The BBC has asked Hugh Edwards to return his salary after he was pay, uh, after his arrest last year. It's thought he earned around two hundred thousand pounds between November and this April when he resigned. And staff at Pret have been given body cameras following a spike in shoplifting and attacks. The coffee shop chains launched it across six stores in London. Those are your headlines. News at six. Thanks very much, Chanel. Now the weather brought to you by Manx Glass and Glazing. It's going to be all right this evening. Dry and sunny, a moderate to fresh southwesterly wind. Temperatures still around 15 or 16 Celsius. So much of tonight will be dry, some clear spells at first. It will turn a little bit cloudy later with the threat of some patchy light rain and minimum overnight temperatures will be around 11. So the weekend, any patchy light rain at first tomorrow is going to clear quite quickly and the rest of the day will be largely dry with sunny intervals. It's going to feel quite warm in the sunshine, light to moderate southwesterly breezes, so temperatures around 19. And again on Sunday, sunny spells, light to moderate easterly wind and temperatures up around 20. There might be a few showers later on Sunday or overnight, but that's uh, that's okay, isn't it, as long as the day is dry. Uh, the rain might be quite heavy at times overnight on Sunday. Sunset this evening will be at 9pm. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 5.48. Manx Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674 573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. Simply income protection from Kestrel Insurance. A choice of benefits. Simple underwriting and peace of mind with a regular income for up to two years if you're unable to work due to illness or injury. Kestrel Insurance is registered with the Isle of and Financial Services Authority. Carpetland, the carpet specialist with the island's best value carpets in stock, often fitted within a week. Furnitureland, for three-piece suites, dining and living room furniture and a selection of amazing beds. Carpetland and Furnitureland, West Street, Ramsey. Manx Mobility and Onken have it all. Daily living aids, wide-fitting shoes, rise recliners, beds and scooters, including lightweight and airline approved models. Call in and see how our expert team can make your life easier. Manx Mobility at the top of Summer Hill. At Bond Fabrics, we're not just a fabric shop. As well as curtains and upholstery and dress and costume fabrics, we've knitting and crocheting walls, made to measure curtain and blind service, plus poles and tracks. Visit Strand Street, Douglas, call 6118856 or see bondfabrics.im. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. 
It's just gone five past five. So the opening of the Royal Manx Agricultural Show has been somewhat overshadowed by a row between the show's organisers and a local company which was barred from attending. Now, this is due to a discrepancy in the contracts between the Department of Environment, Food and Agriculture and the Royal Show itself. I'm joined now by Christian Jones. And first of all, Christian, this announcement feels very last minute. So Gelatory in Ramsey was expecting to be attending the Royal Show this weekend and set up within Deffers Marquee, uh, but it can no longer do that because of, like you say, an issue with the contracts whereby an exclusive deal was already given to another vendor. So the show is well within its rights to do that if it wants to. Why was this not spotted sooner? Well, exactly. DEFA does say, and I'll quote now, it was aware that due to an exclusivity agreement between the Manx, Royal Manx uh, Agricultural Show and a sponsor, it would not be possible to exhibit or sell ice cream or gelato without prior approval from the organising committee. Uh, we now know that approval was not given, but we don't know why it was left to the last 24 hours before that decision was actually finalised. Uh, the department has since issued a statement which says, it knows how incredibly disappointing and frustrating this will be and goes on to say we offer our sincere and wholehearted apologies for the delay in communicating this position. Well, let's just bring you some of what the Chief Officer of DEF, uh, Scott Gallagher, said on the Man in Line earlier today when he was asked about the situation. Uh, we're really proud to be here. We want to thank the Royal Show uh, Committee and organisers. This is a fantastic event for the island. Um, there was an opportunity and... We'd been asked if we could maybe have the gelatory in our marquee, but clearly uh, there is a sponsorship arrangement in play, and I would like to you know, apologise for any ructions or any uh, problems that we've caused, uh, whether the Royal Show or the sponsor or even the gelatory. We tried in good faith to try and facilitate something that could have worked to ensure that we had any local producer who wanted to be in our marquee there. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We respect that there is commercial arrangements in play. And again, it's just unfortunate and regret that it's played out in the last 24 hours. That is Scott Gallagher, the Chief Officer of DEFA, with an apology on Man in Line earlier today. So, Christian, we know Gelatory had already prepared its products to take to the show. Now they won't be able to sell those there. What has their reaction been? Well, they're not happy, to say the least. Uh, they say that they would love to be able to attend. Uh, Rory, who is the owner of the business, said it was a shame given the Food and Drink Festival is no longer going ahead either uh, and told Manx Radio that Defer shouldn't have made false promises. You know, in my job, before I create a flavour or anything like that, you know, we've got to do, you've got to, you know, do your groundwork, basically. And, you know, they've just simply not done that. And unfortunately... I'm particularly more frustrated at the fact that I found out two days before we were, you know, the day before we were supposed to set up and two days before the event. I think that's kind of, you know, where, where my frustration stems from more than anything else, completely directed at, at DEFA for the fact that they've, they've taken away the opportunity to exhibit at the Food and Drink Festival. And now they've said that they're going to offer people the opportunity to exhibit at these shows. Um, but clearly not everybody's allowed to exhibit at these shows. And, um, you know, sometimes that's the way it goes. You know, um, it, it's not really for me to comment on exclusivity agreements or anything like that. Um, but, you know, as I said to you, my relationship is with DEFA. DEFA had made a commitment to me um, as a food business and as a taxpayer, and they've not upheld their commitment. That is Rory Dorling, who's the owner of Gelatory, speaking there. We should say that was recorded before the apology from DEFA was given. And again, the De department has told us it will continue to reflect on how it can best improve support and promotion of the island's food and drink producers all year round. You can find much more on this story at manxradio.com. Nine and a half minutes past five. Let's stay with the show because you might have been hearing this afternoon free potatoes are being handed out to visitors to the Manx National Farmers Union stand at the Royal Show. And this move is to highlight the lack of outlets for farmers to sell their crops, a situation it's claimed has worsened since the disappearance of ShopRite stores. All the potatoes being given away are surplus stock that local producers are unable to sell. Sarah Comish is the General Secretary of the MNFU and she's calling on the public and government to support Manx farmers by seeking out locally grown produce. We just wanted to make a little bit of a stand about this here today um, with the Manx National Farmers Union stand. So we are putting in front of our stand 
all of the surplus product that doesn't have a place in the local market at the moment that has been produced and now has no nowhere to go so what we're doing is we're offering it to the visitors for free if they'd like to make a donation in lieu of payment they can make that they can drop a few coins into our um, into our keg here. That is for the Isle of Man Agricultural Benevolent Trust. Um, but we just really want to raise awareness of the fact that Manx produce is here. Farmers are producing food. They just need a route to market. That is Sarah Comish, General Secretary of the MNFU, speaking at the show a little bit earlier today. Ten and a half minutes past five. Now, if you were yes- listening to yesterday's programme, you might have heard from Onkin Commissioner and resident David Quirk. Now, he'd phoned Man in Line yesterday to raise concerns about some bus shelters in his area, describing them as a disgrace and calling on the Department of Infrastructure to repair them. Mr Quirk said he believed maintenance needed to be a priority for the department as part of the future transport set- strategy. We contacted the DOI for a response and they've come back to us with the following statement now. The DOI has a rolling annual programme for bus shelter repairs or replacement as well as improvement works for accessibility. Repairs range, they say, from seat replacement, panel powder coating through to a full new unit. The list of works is agreed yearly with the department, balancing the priority of each site based on structure, accessibility and cost. It's also impacted, they say, by surrounding infrastructure, utilities or land ownership and level of disruption to the public and businesses. The shelters in question that Mr Quirk refers to, they say, are not on the scheduled works for this year, but will be considered for next year. You're listening to Update. Let's turn our attention to other business news now, brought to us by Ramsey Crookle. And a senior executive at the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority has been shortlisted in the prestigious City Wealth Power Women Awards 2025. Sarah Kennedy, who heads the Portfolio Supervision Division, joined the authority in July last year, following a career in the financial services industry spanning over 30 years. She's nominated in the Woman of the Year Government Regulatory and Not-for-Profit Organisations category, along with six other female business leaders. The results will be determined by a combination of public vote and a judging panel. Well, Ramsey Crick will also bring us the daily stock market report. And I can tell you that UK and European stocks closed up in the afternoon trade. US stocks were lower earlier after market participants bought the dip in the previous session. Gold prices held steady after a sharp rise in the previous session, buoyed by a dip in US Treasury yields as investors grew confident the Federal Reserve will lower interest rates next month. And oil advanced this week after the stock market recovered losses from Monday's sell-off. Well, oil currently stands at $79.36. That's up 0.56%. Gold is up 0.09% at $2,428. And a look at the markets. A short time ago, the FTSE 100 uh, closed up 0.33% at 8,171. And the latest from the Dow Jones up 0.14% at 39,500. And the Nasdaq up 0.21% at 16,695. I'm running late. Again, do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog baskets. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Crook all later? Oh, uh, no, of, of course not. Um, 5 pm, is it? Quarter to three. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Well, as we heard Chanel mention, the Mountain Road is going to close again this evening from 6.30 until 10pm for maintenance work. It's in from Barul Park in Ramsey to Craigna Bar. Two of the five evening closures planned for this week had to be postponed because of the weather, so there are provisional dates possibly going to be used next week. We'll find out more about that after tonight's session. And just a reminder, tomorrow the Royal Manx Show is on again at Nokalo Farm in Patrick, so do expect the traffic to be busy around that area. There will be signs in place. All OK down at the airport and the steam packet as well. Ask how you can spread the cost interest free at Keyside. It's coming up to quarter past 5. 
The woman behind an appeal to raise funds for the family of a 21-year-old Peel man who died in a road traffic collision on Wednesday says there's been a heartwarming response from the people of the island. Melissa Menton, who's also from Peel, told us that the money raised, currently standing at more than £6,500, will be used to cover funeral expenses and provide help to the family of Nesta Hasselden. The response has been overwhelming, to be honest. The Isle of Man and Peel community have exceeded expectations. we managed to hit the target in less than 24 hours, which is just remarkable, really. And the funds that are raised, I, I believe that they're going to be used to cover funeral costs, is that correct? Yeah, so a mix between funeral costs. Um, I know one of the siblings is, she lives in the UK, so travel costs for her to kind of come home, any accommodation, therapy that they might need, and, you know, just anything that can support the family to reduce that kind of financial burden as well at the moment. It's obviously a terrible tragedy to befall any family, and I understand you've been spending time with Nesta's family. More the the two younger children. They're very good friends with my kids, so they've been with me every day since. They've been up, you know, baking cakes. We're at the show today. Just anything we can do to just keep their mind away from from what's unfortunately going on, you know, at home. Now, the Isle of Man is a very small community and something like this, I think, is is felt by everybody. I believe that you know the family quite well and Nesta was a well-known lad in the community. Mm, Sasha, Nesta's mum, she's one of the youth workers for Peel Youth Club and Nesta was as well. So all the young children of Peel know or known Nesta um, and Sasha. So I think most of Peel are grieving as well. They, they've really felt it. Now, the appeal is continuing. And how can people help out and contribute to it if they wish to do so? So we have posted it on social media. A couple of the radio stations like yourself posted it on their page as well. Unfortunately, there was a fake fundraiser posted up and so we were trying to steer people away from making any clicks on that so any official page that's why we've tried to push people towards using those links so they know that it's the genuine fundraiser it's extraordinary isn't it that somebody could do something like mm. that over something as tragic as this yeah it's it's not very nice but we've got the real one going and people are donating you know even as little as a few pounds that they've got is welcomed you know it, it's been really heartwarming to see That is Melissa Menton, who's behind the fundraiser to provide help for the family of Nesta Hasselden. And if you'd like to find a link to that, you can go to manxradio.com. 17 and a half minutes past five. So a little bit earlier today, we heard on the news that the airspace around Ronaldsway Airport was closed after a pilot reported a drone in the area. Well, I'm joined on the line now by Head of Air Traffic Services, Jeff Pugh. Uh, Good afternoon, Jeff. First of all, can you just tell us what exactly happened today? Good afternoon, Beth. Yes, uh, at about 2.30 this afternoon, the air traffic control team received a call um, from an off-duty member of staff from one of our local airlines who reported seeing a drone over Balasala railway station. Um, And so we followed our standard procedures and we suspended arrivals and departures and any local flights um, out of an abundance of precaution and safety and we contacted the emergency services joint control room um, on the direct line and got the police to come and see what they could find. So what issues do drones pose in that area? Well, I think, as people may have seen in national press over the last few years, as drones have become um, more frequently used, drones can cause severe disruption and safety implications around airports. And it's no different here in the island. As you said in your introduction, we are surrounded by controlled airspace um, for which all aircraft, including drone operators, need to have a permission from air traffic control in order to fly in that airspace. And so whenever we see any aircraft, including drones that are not talking to us and that we don't know about, they have the potential to cause a significant hazard to aviation. And how often do you typically see issues of this nature in Ronaldsway airspace? Well, I think we've been quite fortunate, obviously, as a small island with a really obvious and well-known airport and where it is. We don't see that many issues with drones around the airport. Um, There is a a legal restriction on the Isle of Man, um, which is five kilometres around the centre of the aerodrome, uh, which is about three nautical miles. 
and that's a, a total restriction on any drone flying within that area unless they have a permission from the Alabama Civil Aviation Administration as well as an ATC clearance. So I think because of that and those restrictions are quite well publicised and quite well known, we don't see that many issues at the airport. I would say probably in the last 12 months we may have had two or three, including this one. So you mentioned that legal restriction and also the fact this afternoon you did contact the Emergency Services Joint Control Room. What are the consequences for those that break the rules? Well, they're potentially quite severe, obviously, with aviation safety and the safety of the um, travelling public and of aircraft and the potential consequences of those, the penalties can be quite severe. I should say that the, the legislation and the regulations around the use of drones throughout the island is set by the Isle of Man Civil Aviation Administration, which is the independent safety regulator for aviation on the island. And they set out in their legislation what the potential penalties might be if people are found to have contravened um, these um, rules and, and regulations. And they can go up as high as £10,000 fines and or... Um, uh, prison sentences of up to five years if people are found guilty of, of the most uh, serious types of contraventions. Well, Head of Air Traffic Services, Jeff Pugh, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you. It is 21 and a half minutes past five. Let's turn our attention to sport now. We're joined by our sports editor, Rob Pritchard. Faster my Beth, starting with motorsports and we're getting more Manx Grand Prix news coming in and Dominic Herbertson is set to compete in two different classes at this year's MGP. The 33-year-old will contest the reintroduced Classic Junior event on a 350cc step plan Honda K4 whilst also mounting a charge on the Classic Superbike race on board a Bob Henderson Racing 750cc ZXR Kawasaki. The rider from Hexham missed last year's racing of the meeting after being involved in a crash at Lamfell during practice which resulted in a broken ankle. Or well, this year elsewhere he claimed his first ever podium at the Isle of Man TT race finishing third in the Super Twin TT Race 1 on the 5th of June. Well, sticking with motorsports, Team Grantham Lodge has confirmed it'll field three riders as it targets success in the classic racing at this year's MGP. The New Zealand-based team will once again support double MGP podium finisher Mike Brown, who will be joined by Reese Hardesty and Rob Hodson. Brown and Hardesty will take part in the classic senior race on ES2 Norton and Velocette machines respectively. Meanwhile, Hardesty and Hodson will be part of the classic junior event, reintroduced for 2024, on Velocette and 350cc AJS 7R machines respectively respectively, and a reminder that the 2024 Manx Grand Prix is scheduled to take place from the 18th to the 26th of August. And in athletics, and the 2024 Isle of Man Marathon Championship is set to take place in the north of the island this weekend. The event, organised by the Isle of Man Veteran Athletes Club, will see the headline marathon event starting at 8.30am on Sunday, with the supporting half marathon challenge getting underway at 9am, both on Morag Promenade in Ramsey. Both races will be, will be run on what is known as the Manx Northern Course, covering just under 13.25 miles. It's a circuit, starting and finishing inside the Balaclone Stadium on North Shore Road in the northern town. Well, in the marathon last year, Bolton United Harriers athlete Phil Hardman claimed both overall victory and top spot in the men's race, with a time of 2 hours 49 minutes and 54 seconds. Winner in the women's marathon contest was Evelyn Twomey in 3 hours 15 minutes and 26 seconds, which also saw her finish 16th overall. Meanwhile, the half marathon races saw two local athletes taking victory, with Corin Leeming and Gemma Aston winning the men's and women's races respectively. And elsewhere tonight, nearly two weeks since they last took to the field FC Isle of Man are back in action this weekend as they welcome Longridge Town to the bowl in the NWCFL Premier Division on Saturday night the Manx side's manager Paul Jones says his side will have to assert themselves against a team which he believes has some very strong qualities. They're really clever with their movement and you know we always think they're one of the better teams that we play against over the last couple of seasons they move the ball really especially on our pitch with some really clever players and clever movements and they pose a real challenge to, to how we defend and how, how we mark space and they can create big spaces in defensive structures because of how they move the ball and how they move around as a, as a group and off each other so we've got to be really really on it they move like they they played at higher levels which obviously a few of them will have done so you know it'd be it'd be it's a similar test to playing against Chester or playing against Ratcliffe as we did pre-season you know on, on Saturday when we're defending but 
like a lot of teams at this in this league, we feel that they they've got some stuff that they're not quite as good at, and you know that that's where we really need to exploit it when we've got the ball. And you know, last year they they played us off the pitch in the first half because we were probably five yards too deep from our start positions, and we changed that at half time, and then went on to to, to the two 0 deficit at half time into a three two victory. So you know, we've got to be really on the front foot and and all the respect that they've got some really good qualities when they've got the ball. Make sure that we're as dominant as we can be in all areas. Can we expect changes at all going into this one in terms of personnel? Been really lucky, Touchwood, so far pre-season. Whether it's luck or whether it's good planning in terms of how we've trained everybody, but we're, Touchwood, we're, we're doing okay with injuries and availability at the moment. There will be like Luke and Dan Hattersley are playing a bit of a tag team at the moment, so Dan's not available through work commitments on Saturday, but Luke is, so we, we go back to the squad that, that played against Charlton. So, you know, there's no need to make changes at, at the moment. Um, everyone's in a good place. The little break has meant people have had a bit of a rest as well in terms of the travel and the playing at this level of football. So, yeah, we're, we're making as few changes as possible. That is FC Isle of Man manager Paul Jones, who is talking to Rob there. And that game against Longridge Town kicks off at 6pm tomorrow. Manx Radio, as always, will be providing full live match commentary from the home games on our DAB and AM 1368 channels. So when we do any of the subjects that we talk about on Max Radio, we really do always welcome your thoughts. Of course, you have the man in line, which you can phone in when it's an open line between 12 and 1 on weekdays. But we also welcome your messages, whether it's by email or text message. And on breakfast this morning, a couple of the issues that were raised were about buses, first of all. That bus route down to Craig Niche has been that public meeting earlier this week, and it really is generating a lot of comment. For example, Jerry got in touch to say talking about that bus to Craig Niche being discontinued when even a small service is necessary. Do not forget, he says, that the sound is also an important place for visitors to see and the cafe and facilities for the long distance walkers who go around the island. And uh, somebody else texted to say, I think it's disgusting the Mountain Railway is only open for cruise ship tourists. The government, according to Jan, is basically saying the cruise ship tourists are more important than the tourists who come here independently. So as ever, do keep your thoughts and comments coming in. You can always email studio at manxradio.com or text 166 That is all from Update this evening. Thank you so much for your company. Coming up next, it is the Friday Sport Preview with Rob, then Greatest Hits with Chris Kinley, jumping in with Howard and Chris Kane, and then the perfect start to your weekend, the 90s playlist with Nick Holt from 10. If you've got a new story that you'd like to tell us about, newsroom at manxradio.com dot com is the best email address and whatever you're doing this weekend have a great one and i will be back with you from 5 p.m on monday 